KD5OM Jerry's always got that reporter with her with him and he's taking things at random and I wanted to show him this little fun thing that I came up with and it has to do with the featherweight whips that my son Chris sells on Buddy Pool. I'm Bud W3FF and I prototype stuff all the time. One of my favorite products is this. It's called CPVC. It's not sold everywhere, but Ace Hardware has it in many places and so does OSH, OSH, Orchard Supply Hardware in the West Coast. They have T's, just like PVC T's, but they're CPVC. But the neat thing about it is, they're very strong whenever it is in short pieces. And it also has an ID that's that very small also. So we have our featherweight whips, which only weigh 2.2 ounces. And I take a little black plastic tape and wrap around it several times in a couple of places, put these in here, and then shrink wrap the outsides. And then inside here, there is a, a product called a, a nut, oh, let's see, what, what do they call that? It's, a, it's a, an extended nut, but it's an elongated nut that takes quarter inch threads is what it is. Um, anyway, I put that in the center and thread these two uh, whips into it, and you can see it's just about that long, almost long enough for two meters. That's the driven element, uh, that's the uh, reflector. There's the driven element. This I bought from All Electronics, I think. And uh, it's just an easy way to hook one side of the dipole here and one side of the dipole here. Again, the featherweight whips, which only weigh two ounces each. So, what I do want to do in this thing is to make a dipole. So I end up going like this and putting the SWR analyzer on it, about 19 inches on either side, and I've got myself a dipole for uh, two meters. Ah, if I want to make a dipole for six meters, and six meters have been really hot lately, we come out here and you have about four and a half feet on either side, and you have yourself a dipole for six. Well, six has been pretty hot lately, so I decided instead of stopping there, I would go ahead and build something so that I could make a Yagi out of this. So I put this other one I showed you before, instead of four and a half, pull it up five, and I adjust this after I get it up. Now I need a boom to make this work. This is about a little longer than this one because this is the reflector. It's about 5% longer. And here's a boom which just goes on to a half inch pipe thread and it just goes on to the top of a tripod or a mast and it fits perfectly into here so that now my feed point is here. I essentially have a little Yagi. Now the spacing isn't right because you need spacing that is about a quarter wave for that balance. So I'll take this off. And I found these at Walmart. And they are posts for holding tents up. It's four bucks for a package of these. And there are four in there. And I just, again, modified them to put them in a CPVC. And now I have a way to make this thing a little bit longer. And so I now, by the way, I left one of these home in my Jeep. I changed cars at the last minute to drive to the airport to come here to Hampton. So I have another one of these on this side over here. And it makes it the same length here to here as the commercial Buddy Pool Yagi, except that it's a home brew with all kinds of stuff. So if you want instructions as to how to tune this up and how to make it, it costs you around 30 bucks for one of these. Uh, you can uh, contact Jerry and he'll put you in touch with me or just W3FF at BuddyPool.com and I'll put a video together showing how to make a six meter Yagi. The bonus of it is that when you put this together and have the right little boom length here, that you can go and shorten this up and have a two meter Yagi too. So a lot of the different options. Okay, Jerry, I'm done. This is Bud, W3FF at the Buddy Pool booth at uh, Hamcom in uh, Dallas, Plano, Texas.